Welcome everyone, today we are doing things differently. One, I'm actually showing my face today, and two, most of the video will not be done by me, but by Joachim from Statistics Globe. You see, in this video I'm partnering up with Joachim from Statistics Globe because he is releasing a really cool course on data cleaning. This topic is so important and you will hear a lot of data scientists say stuff like 80% of the time that they spend working with data is spent cleaning and then they can get some real work done. So that is why it is really important to make your data cleaning stuff as fast as possible so it helps to know all the cool functions from the tidyverse that help with that. And that is the thing that Joachim is showing you in his course and today he is getting started with that and showing you the first couple of steps that you can use to make your data cleaning faster. And with that said, Joachim, the stage is yours. Thank you so much, Albert, for the opportunity to speak on your channel today. So in this video, I will show you an application of the Tidyverse packages in our programming to a data set about cryptocurrencies. More precisely, I will demonstrate how to download and import a data set into RStudio. Then I will manipulate this data set using the dplyr package. And last but not least, I will visualize these data using ggplot 2 So without too much talk, let's jump into the R code. As a very first step, we need to install and load the tidyverse packages, as you can see in lines 2 and 3 of the code. I have installed these packages already, so for that reason I'm just going to load them, as you can see in line 3. And after running this line of code, all the tidyverse packages, such as read r, deplier, ggplot2, string r, and so on, are imported. Then in the next step, we also need to define the path where our data is located, and we can do that, as you can see in line 5 of the code. So in this line, I specify that my data will be located in a folder which is called datasets in my Dropbox. So after running line 5 of the code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data object is appearing, which is called my path. And now in the next step, we need to download our data to this folder. And I have found a very nice data set which is showing the cryptocurrencies Bitcoin and Ethereum on the Kaggle website. You will find a link to this data set in the description of this video. However, once you have opened this link, you can simply download the data at the top right by clicking this download button. And then you will see in your download folder that a new data set is appearing. We have to extract these data and then we have to move the CSV file that contains our data to our data sets folder. So after moving this data to our folder, we can move back to our studio and load the data. And we can do that by applying the read CSV function of the read R package in combination with the str.c function of the string R package. And within this function, we need to specify the path where our data is located and we need to specify the file name of our data. So after running lines 7 and 8 of the code, you can see that a new tuple object called tipcc is appearing at the top right. And we can print this data object to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 9 of the code. And then you can see that our data set contains 3654 rows and 8 columns. And these columns contain different information about the cryptocurrencies Ethereum and Bitcoin, such as the date, the open value, the close value, and so on. One thing about the read CSV function of the read R package is that it automatically converts your data to the tibble class. You can see that by running line 11 and 12 of the code. And in these lines, I'm using the pipe operator the first time. So if you are not familiar with this operator, this operator helps to create a pipe and in this pipe, you can apply different functions always to the output of the previous row. So in this case, I specify the data set that I want to use. Then I specify a pipe operator. And then in line 12, I specify the function that I want to apply to these data. In this case, I want to apply the class function. So after running lines 11 and 12 of the code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that our data set has the tibble class the tibble class is built up based on the data frame class. And for that reason, the data frame class is also appearing at the bottom in the console. However, in this tutorial, we will always use the tibble class. 
Now in the next step, we might also have a closer look at our data by applying the view function. So once again, I specify the name of our data set, a pipe operator, and then the view function. And after running these lines of code, a new window is appearing, which is showing the structure of our data once again in a new window. And as you can see in this window, you can scroll down and have a look at basically all the rows in our data set. So as you can see, the first half of our data contains the currency Ethereum. And then if you scroll down, you will see that the second half of our data contains the currency Bitcoin. Now, if we want to analyze these data, we first need to define based on which variables we want to perform our analysis. And as you have seen in the previous window and also in this output here, one column is called close and another one is called adjusted close. So first we have to decide if we want to use the closing value of our currencies or the adjusted closing value. And to be honest, I was wondering why do we have two columns that are so similar? And then I used the identical function to check if these columns are even different. And within the identical function, I specified our first column and our second column. And then I saw, okay, both of these columns are exactly the same. And for that reason, I decided I want to use the closing value of our cryptocurrencies. And then of course, we also need to use the date and we also use the currency indicator. So in the next part of the code in lines 19 and 20, I specify that I want to select only these three columns. So if you want to remove certain columns from a data frame, or if we want to specify that we want to keep only a certain set of variables, then we can use the select function. And within this function, we simply need to specify the variable names that we want to keep. And in this case, I'm also storing the output of this in a new tuple object that I call tip cc sub. So after running lines 19 and 20 of the code, this new data set is appearing at the top right. And once we print it to the RStudio console, you can see that our new data set contains the same number of rows, but only the columns date, close and currency. Now in the next step, I want to modify the class of our date column, because as you can see, our date currently has the character class. However, a date typically should be formatted as a date. And for this, we can use the MDY function based on the lubricated package. And the MDY function stands for month, day, year. And I'm using this function because our character string has this format. So the first value is the month, M. The second value is the day, D. And the third value is the year, Y. And if we apply this function to our date column, in the mutate function, we can update our column, as you can see after running lines 23 to 25 of the code. So after running these lines of code, you can see that we have created a new table object called tipcc subdate. And in this data set, the appearance of the dates has changed and the class of this date column has changed as well. Now in the next step, we may visualize our data using the ggplot2 package. And we can do that in a line plot, as you can see in lines 27 to 31 of the code. So once again, I first specify our data set. In this case, I'm using the data set tipcc subdate. Then I use the pipe operator, and then I specify the ggplot function. And you might know the ggplot function already from traditional code. And in traditional code, you would typically specify the data set at the beginning of the ggplot function. However, when you use pipes, you can even specify the data set before the application of the ggplot function, and then you can simply omit the data argument within the ggplot function. So in this case, we start right away with the aesthetics of the plot, and I specify that I want to show the date column on the x-axis, the closing value on the y-axis, and our data should be grouped based on the currency, and the color should also correspond to the currency. And then I want to draw a line plot, and for that reason, I add the gonline function to this. So after running lines 27 to 31 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that a new graphic is appearing. We can also enlarge on this graphic to show it a little bit better. And then you can see that the 
blue line, the Ethereum line, is shown at the bottom of this graph and the Bitcoin line is shown at the top in red. And you can see that the range of this graph is from 2018 to 2023. So the data is quite up to date. And you can see that on average the Bitcoin is worth much more than Ethereum and this of course makes the evaluation of this graphic a bit difficult. And for that reason we might want to show these data in an indexed line plot. And I show you how to do that in the next example starting in line 33 of the code. So first I create a new data set and I do that by specifying our previously created data set tipcc subdate. Then I group our data based on the currency. Then I specify that I want to set a starting value based on the first value in our data set. And I specify that all the other closing values should be divided by this starting value and then multiplied by 100. Then I ungroup our data. This is what you would typically do after grouping your data. And I'm storing all of this in a new tuple object that I call tipcc subdate index. So after running these lines of code, you can see that a new tuple is created and shown in the RStudio console. And as you can see, we have added a new column to our tuple object, which contains an indexed version of our closing value, which is starting at the value 100 and then either moves down or up. Now in the next step, we could draw these data as you can see in lines 39 to 43 of the code. So after running these lines of code, you can see that a new version of our data set is appearing at the bottom right. And this time the data is much more comparable because both our lines start at the value 100 and then you can see how the currencies develop over time in correspondence to this starting point. So as you can see here, the Ethereum currency has developed better over time. So in other words, if you could move back to 2018 and you would have to decide if you want to invest in Bitcoin or Ethereum, I would highly recommend to invest in Ethereum. Is this a result that you have expected? Leave me a comment below. However, one last thing that I want to show you in this tutorial is the beauty of the pipe operator. So we have used the pipe operator during the entire tutorial. However, as you have seen, we have created many different data objects in this process. And you can see all these data objects at the top right of RStudio and the pipe operator allows you to avoid the creation of all these data objects. So we could apply the entire code that we have created before in a single pipe. In this case, I'm starting with our original data set that we have created in the very beginning of this tutorial. Then I use a pipe operator, then I apply the select function to select our variable state, close and currency. Then I use a pipe operator to mutate our data, which means I want to change the class of our data based on the MDY function. Then I use the pipe operator once again to group our data based on currency. Then I specify this starting value of 100. I ungroup our data and then I go even further with the pipe and specify the plot that I want to draw. So I specify the ggplot function, the x value, the y value, the grouping value and the color. And I specify that I want to draw a line plot. And all of this without creating a single data object. So if you run these lines of code, you can see that exactly the same graphic is appearing at the bottom right once again without creating a single data object and with using only one single pipe. Thank you once again, Albert, for hosting my video on your channel and for the opportunity to promote my video course on data manipulation in R using Deplier and the Tidyverse. So in case you are interested in this video course, you may check out the description of this video because in the video description, Albert will put a link to the course description page on the Statistics Globe website. Thanks again and see you then.